Hello everyone, James Charles here, and today I'm going to be making a very important video about a very important topic. Uh, as many of you guys know, about two years ago now, I was involved with a very public online scandal in which some fellow YouTubers made some very serious accusations against me, and within the past couple of weeks, similar accusations are being made again, and I think it's very important that I get on camera and talk to you guys honestly about what is going on. Uh, when this first happened two years ago, I uploaded a video to my channel called No More Lies, and that video was a very planned video. It focused on receipts and screenshots and defending myself in the situation, but I want you guys to know that this video that I'm gonna be making today is going to be nothing like No More Lies. Uh, this is not exactly planned. I don't have a script. I will let you guys know that I do have just some notes in front of me of points that I wanna make because this is a very, very serious topic, uh, but today's video is going to be from the heart and I'm gonna focus on what happened, uh, the conclusions that I've come to, and most importantly, holding myself accountable for my own actions. First and foremost, I need to say sorry. Um, I owe a massive apology to anybody that I've hurt or anybody that I've made uncomfortable with my actions. And I also wanna say I'm sorry to my friends, family, and fans that have to watch another one of these videos because you shouldn't have to, and this is really, really embarrassing. Uh, when this all started online a few weeks ago, it sparked a large conversation and many people have shared their thoughts and opinions and I want to take some time to address literally everything in today's video. Um, but before doing that, I want to make it really, really clear that I fully understand my actions and how they are wrong. Uh, there's no excuse for them and I don't plan on making any in this video either and I hope that you will choose to watch it all the way through. Um, I also just want to make a quick note as well that I'm filming this on the night of March 31st. It is currently 12.54 in the morning. Um, I'm alone here in the studio and I know that when I upload this tomorrow it is going to be April Fool's Day, which is awful timing because this video and this topic is not a joke in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and I don't want anybody to think that it is, but I also don't want to wait any longer to speak about this. I want you guys to know that this is very, very important to me and I'm taking this very, very seriously. Uh, the last thing that I want to say before I just get into it is that uh, I think it's important that I provide a trigger warning for this video. Uh, there's going to be topics and things talked about that are very, very sensitive uh, to some people and I don't want anybody to have to listen to those if they don't want to. So I'm just letting you know right now. Um, but with all that said, I think it's time that we talk. In case anybody isn't aware of what's going on, within the past couple of weeks, two different people, both under the age of 18, have recently come forward saying that they had inappropriate messages with me on social media. Uh, one of them being from last year and one of them being from more recent. Uh, in both of these cases, I added these people on Snapchat, asked how old they were right away, was told that they were 18, believed them, engaged in a flirty conversation, and then later on found out that they were actually 16. Uh, upon finding out, I was immediately embarrassed and blocked both people. Later on, when I saw them making videos about it and those videos going viral, my immediate reaction, completely honestly, was to be really, really upset. I wanted to get on camera and film another No More Lies video where I gather all my receipts and all my screenshots and try to tell my side of the story and then just move on from the situation. And now looking back, that was so stupid because as I did more research on these topics and self-reflected, I realized that the receipts and the screenshots and the, and the specific details of the interaction really don't matter because I fucked up and I needed to take accountability for my actions and most importantly, apologize to the people that were affected by them. These conversations should have never happened, point blank period. There's no excuse for it, there's no if, ands, or buts, and I take full responsibility for that. I trusted the information that was given to me rather than the information I could have and should have gotten myself. In both of these situations, doing research into these people's public social media profiles would have revealed their true ages and therefore these conversations would have never happened in the first place, but I didn't do the research and that is what is so embarrassing. Um, as an adult, it is my job and my responsibility to verify who I'm talking to and therefore there is no one to blame for this other than myself. Um, to the guys involved with this situation, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I added you, I'm sorry that I flirted with you, and I'm really sorry if I ever made you uncomfortable. It is completely unacceptable. I was being reckless and after looking back and finally realizing that this was my own fault, I started doing a lot of thinking and reflecting to really try and figure out why I was actually allowing myself to be so reckless in the first place. In all other areas of my life, my friends, my business, I like to think of myself as pretty put together and on top of things, and I couldn't understand why relationships were the one outlier. Why were they not working? Why was this area of me so different? And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It sucks, and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. I do understand that with these videos coming to light, it's really starting to, not even starting, it's really looking, period. Like, I'm actively searching for younger people to be in a relationship with, and I just want to say firsthand that that is absolutely not the case. My hope has always been to be in a relationship with somebody around my age or older that I can relate to and that can make me laugh. And unfortunately, I've not been able to find that person yet, but the 
idea of actually being in a relationship became so important to me that I was willing to trust too quickly, miss out on red flags, and most importantly, not take the precautionary measures that really anybody, but especially somebody with a public platform, should be taking before talking to anybody. And there's no excuse for that. When I've watched videos in the past of people talking about serious topics such as this one, it's always really bothered me when people would talk about conclusions or changes that they're going to make without actually talking about how they got there in the first place. So I think it's really important that I do that in this video. I just honestly think that I owe it to you guys to kind of walk you through the reflection that I've been doing um, so you know that I'm taking this seriously, how I came to terms with my desperation, and how it led me here. In 2019, my dating life became even more public than it already was when I was called out and labeled as a predator. You guys, I feel like at this point, all know the story, so I don't want to go back into details, but pretty much I had to get on camera and prove that I was being lied to. I had all the receipts to back it up, but at the time I also recognized that I definitely needed to change the way I was going about dating because clearly something was not working. Um, and in that video, I made a vow and a promise to myself and to you guys as the audience that I would be way more careful moving forward. And that promise was not one that I kept. I'm going to be honest with you guys, at the time that I posted No More Lies, I really thought that like the only issue was kind of like the straight guys and being lied to. Um, but I now realize that it was obviously a much deeper problem. And I really wish that at that time, I had spent the time to sit down and look at myself in the mirror and try to get to the root of the problem and understand why I was actually allowing myself to get into these situations instead of just brushing it off and saying like, it's the straight guys and it's the lie. But like I said, I didn't. And as time progressed, my desire for a relationship never really went away. And I slowly started ignoring red flags again and also ignoring my friends and the important people around me that warned me that I was going to get hurt. And to them, I also feel like I really owe an apology because I should have listened. And I feel like if I did, we probably wouldn't be here today. Looking back now and just trying to do my best to piece this all together in my head, I think that my lack of experience when it came to dating growing up and then all of a sudden having a lot of attention from different types of men, some for good reasons and some for bad reasons, really affected me in ways that I didn't quite understand. Um, I honestly just thought that I had really, really bad luck and that I was being taken advantage of when that wasn't the case at all. And I had the mentality that I could reach out to literally anybody and use my explore page and for you page as a dating app. And eventually I would just happen to find the right person, but that's just not how dating works literally at all. Uh, it's gross, it's weird, and it's desperation. I just really thought it was important to share my thought process and the conversations that I've been having with myself and professionals behind the scenes in order to help myself fully understand the situation so I could properly hold myself accountable for how I got here in the first place. When these videos started to come to light, power imbalance became a really large topic of conversation on social media, and rightfully so. In 2019, when I had my whole situation, I was accused of abusing my fame, money, and power to get what I wanted. And when I responded to that at the time, I said that that was disgusting and that I would never want to do that. And to this day, I still stand behind that sentiment 1,000%. So when it was getting brought up again, I got really, really frustrated and was trying to understand because I was thinking to myself, like, okay, I know that this situation shouldn't have happened. I know that I, this conversation shouldn't have occurred. I take responsibility for that. But at the same time, like, they DM'd you first. They lied to you. They flirted first. Like, you didn't use your fame, money, and power to get anything. But I've now realized that, that mentality is completely wrong because the power imbalance can happen even when it's not intentional. What I wasn't getting before is that the excitement that comes with talking to a celebrity is literally enough to make somebody do or say something that they normally wouldn't, even if that celebrity isn't intentionally weaponizing their fame, money, or power. And that's the concept that I just wasn't getting, but I now do. Even though I'm able to turn off my social media and just talk to somebody outside of the spotlight about something normal in normal clothes and no makeup on as James Dickinson, that doesn't change the fact that to them, I'm still James Charles. And that's something that I can't turn off. For me, having a public platform has become such a huge part of my life that at this point, it does feel normal. But I have to understand that to 99.9% of people, it's not normal. It'll never be normal. And that's where the power imbalance lies that I wasn't understanding. But I'm so glad that I finally do, because like I said in 2019, taking advantage of that power imbalance is something that I would never ever want to do, but unintentionally was. With this situation going up, there are a lot of people speaking about this online, whether it be sharing their opinions, arguing back and forth, or most importantly, holding me accountable for my actions. I understand that posting this video today is not going to stop those conversations, but it's going to spark more of them. And that's something that I am completely okay with, because I really feel like these are topics that we need to be speaking about a lot more. I also want to make it clear, too, that through uploading this video today, my hope and my expectations are not to, you know, press post and then forget about it and move on and wash my hands as if nothing happened because something did happen. And what happened was not okay and I don't want to just forget about it. Um, I should have been more careful in every single way when it comes to the way that I was looking for a relationship. I didn't do the proper research and for that I'm once again ashamed and embarrassed. I can't take it back as much as I wish that I could, but I'm really, really glad that I now fully understand the situation so I'm able to do better in the future and I really hope to show up to you guys. I'm a firm believer that when scandals or situations like this happen, you can get on camera and upload an apology video where you say sorry a million times all day long, but the only way to actually show and prove that you are sorry is through action and change. And I'm going to change. This whole situation has been so embarrassing and I'm ashamed, but like I said, I'm now educated and fully understand what went on. And I'm making a promise to all of you right now on camera that I will be way more careful moving forward with every single person that I speak to. My For You page and Explore page are not dating apps, and I will stop treating them as if they are. I also have already started asking for proper identification for every single guy that is either reached out or that I was speaking to, and will continue doing so for the rest of time. I now understand the root of the problem. I understand how and why I, and only I, caused myself to get into this situation. I understand that this could have and should have been easily avoided, and I also understand that I need to be aware of my platform at all times. I didn't understand how a situation like this could affect the people involved, but now I do. And for that, to the victims, I'm so, so sorry. And I promise that something like this will never, ever happen again. I also make an apology to my friends, family, team members, and also fans that had to watch this all go down again. To all of you guys, I once again wish that I had listened earlier on. Um, you guys saw this, and I didn't, and I'm really, really sorry for not taking that seriously and not being a better person and a better role model than I found this right with me. I'm going to take this entire way to reflect and further educate myself on these topics. I think at this point it's really important that I do so so I'm able to follow through with my word and prove to you guys that I will be a better person. Even though I won't be here posting, I do want people to know that I will still be here, available, listening, and learning. At this point, if you made it all the way through the video, I really appreciate it and just wanted to say thank you for listening and I hope to never disappoint you again. See you soon.